Hey! I thought that was you. You can smell that up in my room. Oh, sorry. Don't be. They're growing on me. You going for a run? A hike. Oh. Um, maybe I'll see you there? <laughs> um... I don't know. Um, I have this essay I have to finish, and Brennan's here. Oh. Uh, well, either way, I'll be there for. I could just call you. I don't have um, my phone. Um, if you're not there at like 4:30, I'll just I'll just come back. Okay. Uh, we'll see. James. Yeah. Have you seen my lighter? Yeah, I've got it out here. If you do come, be careful. It's slippery out there. Who's that? It's my friend May. Oh. Hi, May! So, you got any plans for today? Uh. Yeah, I gotta finish this paper, maybe hang out with May for a little bit. I was thinking maybe we could have... All right. See them. Besides, Jane, I came here to see you. I know. I just thought you might want to see your friends tonight. <laughs> well, you you thought wrong.
Nothing. Hey, you think I can get a cigarette? Um, that was my last one. Oh. <clears throat> I'm just gonna run to the gas station, get some more. You want anything? I'm going to bed. If you do come, be careful. It's slippery. I was waiting for you. Hey. What? Jane, is, is everything okay? Hey, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Jane, Jane.
Oh! <clears throat> Hi, Detective Warren. Jane? Uh, yeah, she should be upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll have her call you back. Mm hmm. Hey, I'm sorry to have to wait. Exterior, Wooded Road, 2.10 p.m. Jane walks, head bent up to observe the treetops, but her face remains grave and sullen. She tucks in her arms as her hair whips from the bitter winds. Interior, Brennan's car, continuous. Brennan speeds down the country roads, his eyes focused on his phone screen. Frantically, he taps on Jane's number. Come on, come on, pick up, pick up. Pick up the fucking phone. This is Jean Valencia. I can't make to the phone right now, but I'll be sure to call you back. Thanks. Why is this not stopping? Oh, the Jane, where are you? Uh, Detective Warren called and uh, you said you weren't picking up. And um... Tears set at the edges of his eyes. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I think I know. I saw the note. Brennan wipes his eyes and clears his throat, but the tears return. They trickle down his face before being wiped away once more. I'm not mad at you, um... I'm not mad, okay? Just... Just please call me back. Jane stops at the dirt path beside the Grayson Park sign. She hesitates to enter, looking out at the endless sea of trees. The winds grow stronger and push against her. Peering side to side, she sees no one on the road behind her and enters the forest. Exterior, Grayson Park Forest, continuous. The trees and undergrowth are slick with dew, reflecting the sparse rays of sun that pierce the forest canopy. The dense woods are silent and without wind. Jane treads cautiously on the slick, muddy path. Far down the trail, she stops and veers off the main path, which leads down a small decline to a flowing stream. Trekking across, she heads up a steeper incline. At the top of the hill, she spots May in the distance, her back turned to Jane. Exterior, Grayson Park entrance continues. Brennan's car screeches to a halt as he steps out. He runs to the path and scans the horizon. His breathing is frantic and forceful until he catches a glimpse of a small blue figure on the top of a hill. He sprints into the forest. Exterior, hilltop, continuous. Jane runs to May and reaches out for her. May? May, it's me! May's back continues to face Jane, and when her hand nearly grasps May's shoulder, she's gone. Jane's hand stays outstretched as she sees May again, even farther away. Jane! She doesn't turn around, and continues her pursuit of May. May, wait! May is even farther. Please! She trips over the uneven terrain and scrambles to get up, clawing at the dirt. Behind her, Brennan has made it up the hill, but he is far away. Jane returns to a sprint, covered in mud, with tears streaming down her face. May remains in the distance ahead of her. May, I'm sorry! Jane, stop! Jane is getting closer. I should have come. I... Jane! Jane is now several feet behind May. I didn't mean to make you wait. May turns to her, looking exactly like she did when she left, and gives her a comforting smile. Jane looks on in disbelief and then joy as she moves to hold May. Jane, wait! 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 Brennan, now close enough to clearly see Jane, watches as she slips. Jane falls forward, disappearing from his view. He freezes, and his breath grows sharp with realization. Jane? He runs over to where she was. Exterior, ravine, continuous. Looking over the side, Brennan suddenly collapses on the cliff, wailing in horror. Jane, 60 feet below, lies sprawled out on her back atop smooth rocks. 
Her body rests beside a large stream that cuts through the valley. Brennan's screams grow silent, overpowered by the sounds of the raging creek. Blood slowly creeps from her head, wrapping around the stone before meeting the water. Red clouds form and flow down the stream, farther and farther, before dipping down a small drop. The red water crashes over an orange windbreaker. Wedged between the rocks, underneath the drop, is May. Her back faces the sky as the water rushes through her hair. Brennan struggles to stand as he looks for ways down the cliff. He runs off to the side to find an easier path down. Jane lays still with trails of blood from her nose and ears, but her face is frozen in wonder. Her lifeless eyes are looking up. The sky is clear, the treetops sway in the wind, and the sound of rushing water floods the woods. Fade out. The end.